Welcome back to Soul Adventures. My name is Libby, uh, her name is Strudel, and we are both here to present another solo BGG Solitaire PMP contest game. So today we're going to be looking at a game called Get to the Chapa. Oh, pardon me, the designer told me it's properly pronounced <clears throat> Get to the Chapa. Sorry, that's my best Arnold Schwarzenegger impersonation. Uh... <laughs> So, Get to the Chapa is a game that involves a lot of dice rolling. It is a game of jungle survival and combat, and it has a feel very much like these old action jungle movies from the 1980s, um, especially the ones with Arnold Schwarzenegger running around in the woods and fighting aliens. Um, but this game doesn't have just aliens, oh no, it has aliens, dinosaurs, Nazis, it, it's got all that good stuff. As always, if you're not interested in actually watching me play this game, you can feel free to skip to the end to see my final thoughts. Otherwise, let's get to the chopper! So, first things first, we need to shuffle these cards. And then we take out four. One, two, three, four. The other four are not used. And we'll set the other three aside and take the one off the top. This is our uh, starting zone. And this is us. So in order to get to the proverbial chopper, we need to um, work through this deck of cards and get to the final checkpoint. So I think that probably the best way to explain how to play this game is to just get started. So we see here we start with 12 active um, members of our squad. We have six pieces of ammo and six units of supplies. And the beginning story reads as thus. Your squad of Spec Ops soldiers has been sent on a top secret mission to a remote part of South America. Before you can reach your landing zone, your chopper crashes many kilometers away from your destination. Salvaging what you can from the wreckage, armed with a GPS uplink, your wits and your weapons, you must fight your way through an unknown and hostile jungle. Your only possibility for survival? Get to the chopper! So, um, yeah, in this game we are attempting to make our way through some extremely dangerous jungle territory fighting things like aliens, wild animals, cannibals, and zombies, and things like that. Um, yeah. So, uh, first we need to see who or if anybody was injured in the uh, chopper crash. So we will roll three for the injury table. And I can see that I have a one, so no effect. A two, an active soldier is wounded, and a six, an active soldier is killed. And actually I'm supposed to resolve them from highest number to lowest first, but it didn't really matter in this case. So what we do each round is we roll nine dice. That's what we get started doing. So I have a couple spares just for extra things to roll sometimes, but we start with rolling nine. And then we sort them into boxes. Six. So the sixes go into the six box, and the fives go into the five box, so on and so forth. Now, if we wish, we may re-roll any of these dice except for the ones. The ones are locked in, and this means that we're going to encounter an enemy. So what these various things mean are the twos are for salvaging, and so for every die that's in the salvage box, I can roll on the salvage table and hopefully find some useful supplies or ammunition. If I had a three, I would be able to roll on the march, or not, you don't have to roll on the march, pardon me, you um, can move up to the number of dice that are in that space. Um, these are my stealth dice that I can use to avoid combat, and I can explain that later. Um, this is for fighting, 
engage and these sixes can be really used in whatever box you want they are wild cards so let's have a look at the territory that we're in right now this is um oh god i can't speak spanish Valle del fabuloso presidente Ironically, part of your mission was to assassinate strongman and dictator El Presidente Juan Jorge Julio Jesus Geraldo Steve Javier uh, Josu Chancho. This is his territory, and if you defeat him as an enemy contact, gain 1d6 plus 1 active squad members and advance directly to the checkpoint. So, um, if we encounter him here, then we'll be able to just skip to the end. The flavor text here reads, Chancho does not like to be called El Jefe, El Jefe. The last three men that did could tell you, but they're dead. All right. Um, so this is what we've got. Um, I don't like that we're not moving right now. I'm going to uh, roll one salvage and one engage. And that didn't help, really. We're allowed to roll any number of dice um, to re-roll them up to three times. Um, I think I'm going to stop before I make anything worse. So first things first, we do salvage. So we roll, we roll twice on this, and we get a two and a three. So we resolve the three before the two. A rebel soldier finds you, plus one active, so that's good. And a two. You find friendly locals, plus two supplies. Good. We're going to need a lot of supplies, as you will see. Then we are going to um, see what enemy we have to encounter. So we roll one die, and we see it's a four. We can put it here to remember. A militia combat vehicle. This is a boss. So if it's a boss, that means that I have to fight it for up to two rounds. Normally, you only have to fight for one round. Um, the boss's awareness point total is three, and his firepower is seven. So... The good news is that I have a lot of command and stealth. The bad news is, is that I'm not allowed to retreat when I'm on the start space, so we're going to have to fight. And... We can see here that uh, the firepower is six, but you have one extra die, so that's seven. So it increases difficulty. Um, since I can't fight, or since I can't sneak, I can use my stealth to fight. So I'm going to use my command here. And let's see what we got. So highest to lowest. So. We look at the combat chart, I rolled a 6, so that's 3 hits, and a 5, so that's 2, and a 4, so that's another 2, and it died. So that's pretty good, that's not a pretty, that's, that's not a tough boss I guess as far as they go. So now we just roll again with our 9 dice. Okay, four, three, six, five, three. All right, this doesn't look too shabby. Let's do it. Okay, so we're going to roll twice for the salvage. A rebel platoon finds you. One D3 active. Ooh. So, one D3. Uh, that's a five, so I'm going to say that is three. And we're now at our maximum capacity. Um, but we also rolled a four. So a minefield, we have to roll twice for injuries. So we rolled two twos, it means two actives are wounded. And then we'll march. 
and see what enemy we have. Six, Chancho's Elite Cadre. It has an awareness of four, so I'm not going to be able to sneak around that. Um, so, that means we have a firepower of 11, because it was 10 and then plus one. Not going to be able to sneak. I think that we're going to need a little bit extra firepower here, so what I'm going to do is we're going to take some ammunition. So I'll spend a unit of ammunition to add in another die. Is that going to be enough? No, I don't think so. I'm going to spend another one just to be safe. Okay. Uh, so that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So they had two hit points remaining. That means that we have to roll twice on the injuries. Oh no, a six. Active killed. And a two. Active wounded. Okay, what does this round have in store for us? Lots of ones, oh yay. This one was a one. Huh. Well, marching is going to be kind of good in our case because as we can see here on this space it says dense, so that means that we will have uh, extra evasion and will be extra sneaky. So, um, I do want to march, I think. I will do that. We'll be in dense. What enemies do we have? Two. Small group of thugs. An awareness of two. And the awareness is minus one because we're in dense, so they have an awareness of one. So I just don't want to fight them right now, so we are going to evade. We can use the command dice to do this, but we have to go back one square. All right. Have a lot of movement here, that's good. So first let's roll for salvage. Plus two supplies, you find friendly locals. And then we will march two, three. Our enemy is a small group of thugs again. Its firepower is four. We can handle that no problem. <laughs> Let's see. Not great. One, two. Three, four, five. Barely, but we did it. So these supplies, I can also spend one unit to heal one wounded squad member uh, back into active, but I want to try to hang on to my supplies as long as I can, um, as long as it makes sense, because we're going to have to spend a lot of them at the checkpoint. That is a lot of salvage. We're doing pretty good with supplies though, so I think I might just re-roll these. And as usual, that was a bad idea. Get two more ones and two twos. So I will roll for salvage. Uh, find friendly locals plus two supplies. And now we are at max. 
Minefield, roll twice for injuries. Six and five. An active is killed and a wounded is killed. And now let's see what kind of enemy we've got in store for us. There's another small group of thugs. So their firepower is going to be um, six. <laughs> Their awareness points are two. I think I'm just going to fight them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just managed. So I'm going to march. I move past the open space because the open space is the opposite of dense. So there you get a plus one to your injuries and you know you, you're not able to hide it as easily. And what is our enemy? Militia combat vehicle. A boss. Firepower of six, seven, eight. Awareness, three. I don't really want to go back into the open, so I'm going to fight it. Three, four, five, six. It survives, so it gets to roll on damage. Two injuries. Five and two. One of my wounded is killed. And one of my active is wounded. So on the second round of a boss fight, you can only use um, ammunition to fight. And I'm going to do that. I'll spend one unit and roll and hope it's good. Three. One hit. Oh no, it has one hit point left. So it takes one more attack at us. And kills one of my wounded. And then slinks off into the jungle. And that is that. Oh, lots of sixes. Salvage. Rebel soldier finds you plus one active. Oh, this is a good map for finding more soldiers. And we'll march. And I can also spend my command dice here to march some more if I want. Hmm. Yes, I will march one more square so we'll be in the dents. Chancho and guards, wonderful. Um, and we have an additional die here, so his firepower is, well, technically 13, but I don't think it can go over 12. His awareness is 5, and we're not getting around that. So let's get ready to fight. Can we do this? So I'm going to throw in an ammunition for this. Not bad. So I did six, seven, eight damage. And I have only four hit points left, but that is still enough to hurt us. Uh, 
wounded is killed. An active is wounded. And two with no effect. So now we can choose to just take the punch or we can try to fight back. Well, I want to be able to defeat him because then we can get 1d6 plus 1 active squad members, which is amazing. So I'm just going to spend all my ammo, all two of my ammo, and let's fight. No effect and two hits. He has two hit points left, so we take two damage. And two of my actives are wounded. And he slides off into the dark jungle. Okay, we have at least a lot of supplies, but no more ammunition. So we'll at least be able to make it to the checkpoint this time. So let's salvage two and six. Friendly locals are already at max supplies. Rebel platoon finds you 1d3 active. So that's another three. And then we'll march three spaces. Um, but even though we're at the checkpoint, we still have to fight. Two, small group of thugs, firepower of four. And we'll fight. Three. They survive with one hit point. They get to take a swipe at us. And one of my active is wounded. But there we are, we're at the checkpoint. So what we're gonna do is we are going to uh, roll on the recovery table. So we have one, two, three, four, five wounded. So let's see how our wounded are doing. And we'll roll on this table. Uh, so largest numbers to smaller numbers. So we have six wounded recovers to active. A three, no change. Two, two, died of wounds. And a one, died of wounds minus one supply trying to save them. So, now we have to count up how many squad members we have. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, divide it by two, round it up. So that's five, and that's how much supplies we have to spend. One, two, three, four, five. If we were short supplies, then we have to roll on the supply shortage for every unit that we are short. Okay, on to the next map. Zone, Valle de las Luches Danzantes. Strange lights in the sky, mutilated livestock, and missing persons haunt this valley. Locals tell rumors of an invisible hunter who seems to zap anyone who crosses its path. Exercise extreme caution in this zone. Hmm, where have I heard this story before? Locals tell of gray aliens with large black almond-shaped eyes wearing silver jumpsuits armed with message redacted. Okay, so it's not the same alien as the predator, I guess. But still dangerous, apparently. Locals also tell of bright beams of light transporting them into alien spacecraft. This is message redacted. Okay. I'm going to use my 
command to march, I think. But first we'll salvage. An abducted escapee finds you, plus one active. Not bad. And we'll march too. And we'll see where our enemy is. A flying saucer, which is a boss. It has four um, awareness points and ten firepower. And we cannot evade it. We only have a stealth of two. So let's fight. We're out of... Oh, I forgot to get the reward. Oh, no, I didn't look there. I forgot to get the reward for finishing this map. So you're supposed to get uh, plus two supplies and plus two ammo. Oh, and we were also supposed to be able to roll at plus one on recovery, but I forgot to do that, um, and I will just face the consequences for being forgetful. One, two, three, four, five, six. Four hit points left, so it rolls four injuries for us. Nada. Active is wounded. And two more active are wounded. So I can decide if I want to fight or if I just want to take the hit. I think I want to save my ammo. Or do I? I'll spend one ammo. Five. So that is two damage. We still have two HP left. Two threes. So we have two active which are wounded. Brutal. And then the flying saucer escapes. I'm going to re-roll the salvage. I got two fours. It's going to be pretty sneaky then. So I'm going to spend my... Ooh, do I want to? No, I will just march one. A pair of alien dog-like beasts. Firepower of five. Awareness of two. Wouldn't be very far, really hard to get past them, but um, I might as well just fight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, yes, they are dead. There's too many ones. I'm gonna re-roll this stealth here. Two. So I do get a salvage. Three. An abducted escapee finds you. Plus one active. We need all the help we can get. Another flying saucer with firepower of ten plus three. So it maxes out at twelve. Oh yay. Okay. And we only have four engage dice. 
Let's hope we don't get slaughtered. Oh no, okay, so no effect, no effect. Two, three. And the <laughs> flying saucer has nine hit points left. Okay. So I have active killed, active killed, active killed, active killed. So that's four of my active killers, uh, soldiers are dead. One, two, three, four. Um, one is, okay, no, four. Wounded is killed. Three is an active is wounded. Another active is wounded. And then all my actives are wounded. If you cannot wound another active, then that means one of my wounded is killed. Everyone's wounded. Okay, so we're going to have to take another punch from this guy. Um, let's try to soften him up a little bit with some ammunition. It's our last one. Four. Two hits. So that's only seven. Let's see what we can do. Okay, so he kills an active, so he just kills a wounded. Kills a wounded. Wounds an active, so therefore kills a wounded. Active wounded, so kills a wounded. Active wounded, so kills a wounded. And no effect. I have one guy left. Thankfully, the flying saucer, saucer leaves us alone, but that is literally my one guy. Um, I am going to spend a unit of supplies to heal him. So not looking good for us, but I mean, hey, it's not impossible. Okay. The luck is smiling at me. There's no enemy contact this turn. They can march four spaces. One, two, three, four. Gonna march again. And I have to salvage two. So I rolled a four. Alien abduction beam. Minus one active. Duh. The end. <laughs> And my last guy was killed by an alien abduction beam. Okay, so that was a um, rather quick end to my little squad of adventurers. So what do I think about this game? Let's talk about it. Hey, do you want to know a fun fact? Arnold Schwarzenegger does not have a German accent because he is apparently not German. He is Austrian. And if you say that Arnold Schwarzenegger has a German accent, uh, the Germans get a little bit annoyed. Do you want to know how I know? Something they will not tell you, however, is that they do, in fact, like David Hasselhoff. Now, ask any specific German and they will not admit to liking David Hasselhoff, but I know for a fact that the man is still on tour here, so somebody is buying tickets, somebody here likes David Hasselhoff. Another fun fact. Did you know that Baywatch was not so much known for Pamela Anderson here as it was just known for David Hasselhoff? It was the David Hasselhoff show. Anyway, so what are my thoughts about Get to the Chopper? How many more times do I have to say it like this? Um, all right, okay, um, build. That's, I think, where we should start. The build was very easy. I think that you can do this uh, extraordinarily easily if you just print out the files and do some cutting, and then you have some dice and some tokens, and voila. If you want to make it a little bit fancier like me, you can, of course, go through the process of uh, using a laminator, uh, but it's really not necessary. You can use any kind of tokens or counters that you have lying around. I think that Cubes are by far the easiest to manipulate, but really anything works just fine. So the build's extremely easy. 
I think that the instructions are also pretty easy to understand. They're pretty short and simple, and I had really no problem understanding them. So into what did I like about this game? This game is hilarious. Like, I had a big smile on my face most of the time when I was playing this. Um, it's undeniable. I It's just fun. And I think that this is really an enjoyable little romp. Uh, I've never played another game that is themed after these jungle survival 1980s Schwarzenegger movies, and it's it's great. I like how you balance the seriousness of the death and the combat with the silliness of dinosaurs and Nazis. As you can see, the game can be rather difficult. Um, of course, I was maybe not playing properly, but I do like that it's always kind of a toss-up whether you're going to make it to the end or not. I like that this game is a an enjoyable dice chucker. Like it really feels like a solo beer and pretzels type of game. It's fun to just spend some time with yourself and watching the uh, watching the story that unfolds before you. I think is really great. I love how every single zone that you go to has a different backstory. It has its own tables. It has its own loot. It's all so wonderful and flavorful, and I really love the extra effort that went into this. I think that without the theme, this game would be... I don't want to say it would be a bad game, but without the theme, I think this game wouldn't be half as fun, really. I, I love the drama of seeing whether my uh, squad members are going to pull through or not how a lot of them can survive up until the very end and then they die of their wounds and it's just tragic. Uh, it's, it's quite suspenseful in that respect. I love how stealth is a mechanic that you don't have to fight and the whole sixes being wild cards is really wonderful for flexibility. The managing of the supplies is also really good and deciding when to use your ammunition or not. Something some people might not like is just kind of the inherent randomness of some things. Like, as you saw at the end, my last person was just randomly killed by a spaceship beam. Um, but that's really all just part of the fun, in my opinion. I, I like that just wacky, crazy things happen and that you can't always really do anything about it. I, I don't think that this is a game for somebody who really wants a, an extremely strategic experience. You have to be okay with losing and you have to be okay with the unexpected happening. I think the difficulty is great also because if it at some point becomes too easy or too hard, you can also just um, adjust the difficulty pretty easily by changing how many squad members you start with or how much damage the enemies take or if they have any damage resistance. I think it would be uh, relatively easy to change the difficulty in that respect. It would, however, have been nice if the designer had like supplied a table with like different game modes. If this had a high score that I could beat, oh my goodness, this would be amazing. I don't even know if it would be that hard to do like the whole high score kind of thing. You can figure out how many enemies you killed, you can look at how many resources you have at the end, you can see how many of your squad members survived. Um, I want to see a scoring system. That's just my humble request. And then I think is really my only serious criticism about this game, and that is there are only eight zones. Now, every zone is really nice. They're all very flavorful, and they all have their own story and everything, as I said before, but there are only eight of them. And in every game, you have to draw four cards, so that means that it's really not going to take long before you see the same cards again. And really, in just a couple of playthroughs, you're gonna see all the cards, and a lot of that uh, fun of exploration is not going to be there. I would love to see more zones with maybe more branching paths where you can choose to take. I think that this game could really use as much strategy as it can get in this respect. So I would, I just want more. I note to the designer, if you want to make more levels for this game, I would be willing to pay good money for them. My final verdict for Get Rid Chopper is two thumbs up. I love this game. It is fun. It doesn't take itself too seriously. And also you should not take this game too seriously either. Just have some fun throwing some dice around and seeing how many of your squad members will make it to the end. I, I love watching them slowly getting picked off one by one. Your party is slowly getting more wounded. Maybe you're lucky and you get a couple of uh, 
rogue scientists or something who just join your party. Uh, I really like how the fewer people you have, the fewer supplies you need to keep them going. So there is a little bit of uh, difficulty adjustment in the way that goes. If you have a lot of squad members, then you're going to need a lot of supplies, and then therefore you are going to have a much higher chance of running out of supplies. When you only have three guys alive, well, you can probably get the supplies to keep them going. If you like what I'm doing here, please subscribe, and if you want to help support the channel, please check out my Patreon. I have been so grateful for all of the support of all kinds, whether it's my, my first few patrons or just all of the really kind words and nice feedback that I've been getting. Uh, this community is awesome, and I love you guys. Take care of yourself. I'll see you in the next video.